Hi, I'm Lisa with Ivy Lane Interiors, and I got this $50 Facebook find. And when I looked it up, it's a Henry Dawn offered for lots of money on different sites. So I thought this is a special piece. It's solid wood in the campaign style, which has those little brass accents on the side. It did have some damage. You can see there, a little bit of veneer damage. It's, honestly, that's the main damage on the piece. The rest of it was just scratches and things that I can get off during the refinishing process. But all the original hardware was there. Um, it was, a, like I said, it's a Henredon, which means it's a fabulous quality. You can see it had the dovetail construction. I was missing a couple of the dividers and there should have been like a kind of like a jewelry um, inset, like a little divider that would have sat right there on the top left. But it's a great piece. So I dove right in and started the cleaning process. This is my DeWalt shop vac. You can see I'm using the brush attachment and it's a great, um, not very expensive. I think it was uh, maybe 80 or $90. Sometimes I even get them on a uh, better sale than that. But it's a great little shop vac. I was missing one of the drawer guides. So I decided to take off the bottom one and use that as a template. And I'm going to create a new one later. All of this campaign hardware was was attached usually there's like little pin nails but all of these were attached with screws so I took all of them off very carefully you can see all that dust underneath and all that's going to get cleaned off and fin it refinish but that's another reason why you want to make sure you take all your hardware off I have seen people paint over the brass hardware I can't believe it. Please just carefully take those pieces off and do not paint them they can be polished and made to look brand new to clean my hardware, I like to boil some water, add some distilled vinegar, and then I just put all of my hardware in there and I let it soak. I let it, if it's if it's real brass, solid brass, you can let it soak for a couple days and it's really gonna help you during the cleaning process. I'm just gonna let it set. You see, I put it in the garage because it's real stinky. Just let it kind of set for a few days and then I'll come back and polish it later. Now I'm going to move on to the body. I'm going to use the awesome degreaser. It's a great concentrate. You can just dilute it and it's a fabulous degreasing cleaner. And I'm just going to get into all the nooks and crannies and give it a really good sanitation. I decided to go for a full refinish on this piece. So for the flat parts, I'm going to use my carbide scraper to go ahead and remove as much of the finish as I can. That's so satisfying. It was a pretty thick finish. So I use my carbide scraper on the top and um, you can use stripper. You can use whatever you want. There's a variety of ways you can strip finish. Um, but a lot of times I like to use my carbide scraper um, on vertical surfaces and where there's not a lot of, um, let's say there's not a lot of carvings and details. You can see how beautiful that wood is going to be. So I'm just gonna use a combination of my carbide scraper, go back in with my orbital, do some hand sanding. So you just have to sand through the grits. Once you remove it, then I usually start with an 80 grit, then I go up to 120. Sometimes I hit it with a 150 and then I end with a 180. And so you just gotta sand through all of the grits to get the finish really prepped and ready for whatever finish you're gonna use. Sometimes if you're using a gel stain, you're, you know, it says you're only supposed to go up to maybe 150 grit. So it just depends. This was the original finish. They just kind of slopped it on there. So this is super satisfying. I'm just gonna sand all this back and make it nice, fresh and clean. You can see this is a solid wood construction on this dress are super great quality. For the drawers, I decided to use a stripper. This is QCS, it's a all natural, non-toxic stripper by Stripwell. And the reason I'm using the stripper on these is you'll see that the grain pattern is um, vertical. And so it would be very difficult for me to hold down the drawer and use my carbide scraper. And so honestly, it's just more effective for me 
because of the way that the grain pattern is, is to use the stripper. So um, you can see it works really well. You use it, what you do is you spray it on, you wait 15 minutes, and then you spray another layer on, and then you wait another 15 minutes, and then it should be ready. So you gotta kind of test it. Um, I love it because I don't need a respirator. Um, it's fabulous. Doesn't work on every single finish, but what I've what I've started doing with QCS is I'll do a test spot on it. So maybe like on a part of a dresser, I'll just do the fifth, you know, do the do the spray, wait, do another spray, and then straight scrape it and see if it'll work before I spray it all over the dresser. Because there's no need to waste product. Since it works so well on the drawers, I decided, well, instead of using my carbide scraper, I'll go ahead and use it on the side because it's just really easy to use. So um, you can see it worked really well, even on the sides. So that's a nice thing. It's nice to have some of these non-toxic strippers in your toolkit. If you're trying to strip something that has a lot of carvings and a lot of details, it would be very difficult to try to use sandpaper to strip that finish. So once I'm done with the stripping, I'm gonna go ahead and sand through all of the grits. You can see I'm gonna use my scraper to get on the top drawers. I'm sanding everything and stripping everything to raw. So again, I go through the grits, start with 80, go up to 120, and then I go up to 180. So for that little corner that had the veneer damage, I'm going to use quick wood. Now, this is a wood epoxy. You're just going to cut off a little bit of it. You knead it together, make sure it's a uniform color, and then you're going to put it where you want it, and then it'll dry and it's sandable. Now, it doesn't take stain well, um, so I'm going to have to paint in the veneer, which I will show you later how I do. But this is a great way to do some veneer repair. Sometimes, you know, when I was first doing this, if I would have just probably painted the whole piece because I, I wasn't confident with veneer repair. But the more you do it, um, the better you get at it. Um, I'm not perfect at it, and I'm, I want to expand my skill set, but you got to start somewhere.
after the quick wood dried, I noticed there was still a little area that was not flat. So I went ahead and did a second layer of the quick wood. So I'm going to use General Finishes Gel Stain to refinish this chest. Um, I'm going to test out some colors and some color combinations. So um, I'm just going to stir both of the cans and then I'm going to apply it to the side of the dresser. So the first color here is Antique Walnut. It's a really beautiful brown. Um, and then the next one, this is Nutmeg. You can see it's just a little bit, um, has a little bit more orange to it. And so then I was like, okay, well let's do a 50-50 mixture of each of them and see what that looks like. So here's a 50-50 mixture of the antique walnut and the nutmeg, and I actually, I like the 50-50 mixture. So that's the one I'm going to go with. So I'm just going to use some mineral spirits, and I'm just going to take that back off, and then I'll move on to staining. I like to do a slip coat of mineral spirits over raw wood before I apply the gel stain. This is actually recommended by General Finishes. It allows the gel stain just to slice across the surface of the wood and it helps it just to go on very smoothly. So I rub it against the grain and then I rub it with the grain and after just a couple moments I just come back with a lint free rag and then I wipe off the excess. Here's the magic of gel stain. See this little white area? I'm gonna apply the gel stain and because it's not a penetrating stain, it just sits on top of the wood. It just covers those areas. It's like magic and it's just super forgiving. I mean, it doesn't cover everything, but it is a fabulous way to just cover any kind of imperfections that you might have.
I'm going to use this kit to fix the area that had the veneer damage. So this is what it looks like after I have the quick wood on it. And this kit comes with several different little tubes. And what you're basically going to do is you're going to paint on the wood, <laughs> the wood color. So uh, you always want to start with the lightest color first. And we're just basically fooling the eye. So we're just going to paint it in and we're just going to cons consecutively go darker to cover this up. We want it to blend in to make it look like the wood surrounding it. So you can see I'm going to start light and then I'm going to use a heat gun and I'm going to dry that layer before I go on to the next layer. And as I progressively get a little darker, and then I'm going to start mixing the colors. And then I'm going to get a little bit closer to that walnut because I've already stained the drawers. So you got to stain the drawers first because then you want to make sure that you're staining um, to the color that the final product. So you make sure you just stain, stain the rest of the drawers the way that you want them. And then you go back and do your repair. Now you can see I'm going to start getting more into mixing the colors now that I have a really nice base. I've kind of built it up and this is going to help it just kind of start blending into the surrounding wood. So it's not 100% perfect, but um, after this, I'll let it dry and then I'll put a little bit more gel stain on top of it. And then once I um, seal it, um, it'll be hardly noticeable. So I'd like to get into some of the Mohawk products. They have blend all sticks. That will be kind of like my next progression. But, you know, veneer in painting is something is a, is a new skill that I'm working on. And um, you won't get any better at something until you just try it. So it's a skill that's worth trying and experimenting on. So I'm getting better with every project that I do. 
So now it's time to clean the hardware. You want to make sure that you put on some gloves because we're going to use some Barkeeper's Friend and it's kind of harsh on your skin, but I've already boiled them um, with some vinegar and that will help really loosen all of that tarnish. Then I'm just kind of come in. I, I like the powdered form of the Barkeeper's Friend. I think it provides some friction to kind of help polish it up. See how beautiful that is. And you can use the liquid form too. I've used both, but I just come in either with steel wool, like a really fine steel wool or I'm using a scotch bright pad. Sometimes I have little brushes that I use that can kind of help me get into all the little nooks and crannies. So my daughter's helping me here and we're just making an afternoon of it and just cleaning all of this hardware. Once the gel stain is dried, I'm gonna come back and I'm going to seal it with two coats of Osmos PolyX. This is a hard wax oil. It provides a really durable finish and a nice low luster shine. So what you do is you just put it on and you can apply it like I'm doing here with a Bondo scraper and you can just see it just really brings that wood to life. It is fabulous. It's a really easy product to use. You literally just put it on, spread it around, and then you just wipe off the excess. Let it dry for about an hour or so and then you can come back and do a second coat. Some of the hardware had some corrosion on it. So I'm just using some decor wax. This is redesigned by Primas. This is their eternal gold wax. And I'm just going to apply it to those areas that are a little um, corroded. And then once, and it just blends in beautifully with the original brass. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and seal everything up with some lacquer. So you've heard that God is in the details or design is in the details. And these are the little things. So you see that little screw? I made everything horizontal. Those are those fine details that make a big difference. Now here's how I recreated the drawer guide. Um, I used the original one as a template and I just traced it around and I used my jigsaw. Um, Obviously, in hindsight, I wish I had not used a piece of trim. I wish I had just used maybe like a piece of quarter inch plywood, but it worked. You know, I just clamped them together, um, went ahead and did some pilot screws, screwed it in, and it worked great.
the last step is prepping the drawers and lining them. So I give a good vacuum and then I'm just going to line the drawers. I don't use any measuring or any math. I'm just going to pull it across the drawer and I'm going to make a crease and then I'm going to cut it. Then I'm going to roll it up and I'm going to put it against the front of the drawer and I'm going to trim off any excess along the back. The key to this is just to make sure that you don't have too much paper that you're dealing with because if you have too much it just makes it really difficult to trim it in the end. I'm going to pull back about the top third of the paper and I'm going to adhere it to the front of the drawer and I'm just going to start smoothing it out with my hands. Once I have that top area smoothed out, then I'll go ahead and remove the rest of the backing and then continue to smooth it out. Next, I'm going to use a Bondo scraper and it's going to, it's a really nice, soft, flexible plastic. It's real gentle and it's just going to help me smooth out any bubbles, try to start getting that paper into the corners. Then I'll use a wallpaper scraper and I'll just make sure there's no air bubbles and then I'm going to really get the paper and press it into the corners so that I can trim it. If there's an area that kind of pulls, don't pull it because it will tear. Just come back with your knife and trim it and it'll be perfect. So let's look back at the before. Definitely needed some love. It had a lot of scratches, it had that veneer damage. Um, I didn't even know what it was when I picked it up. I didn't know it was a hindered on, didn't know it was such great quality, um, but man, it was such a pleasure to work on. And here is the final product. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's like brand new. Um, I love the color combination. Um, when I did the 50-50 of nutmeg and antique walnut, um, that brass hardware polished up beautifully. Um, I think the low luster shine really works on this particular piece as well. So I don't know, are you a fan of this kind of furniture? Do you like the campaign? I know it's not for everybody, but thanks for watching. Tell me what you think.